Hi, I'm Nick Saran, owner and head of design at VF Engineering in Anaheim, California. We've been designing and manufacturing supercharger systems for over 20 years. One of our flagship superchargers is for the V10 engine found in the R8 Gen 1 and Gen 2. What we're going to talk about are some of the secrets behind how we designed the features and what we did to make the supercharger kit. The key element of the supercharger system is the compressor unit. And what we did was we just removed the intake manifold. That's the air intake system for the stock engine and we made way for the supercharger base plate. This is the proof of concept idea which allowed us to test fit and check for clearance, an actual plate in place of the intake manifold. We then designed that in SolidWorks in computer-aided design software and created a complete piece and then 3D printed it. The latest technology in manufacturing prototyping allowed us to test fit the actual concept and design. Once that was committed, we were able to then create a pre-production piece in aluminium. It's a 6061, it's a pretty rough cut piece. And then a finished production piece. This is with a type three hard anodized, a little uh, additional features were added and additional strength and pocketing to lighten it up. And then what we did was created a, a lid or a manifold for the supercharger. There are two different versions for the two different versions of engines. There's the first generation and the second generation which have fuel injectors in them. The design of the lid was then converted into a cast format and you can see the finished piece here. It also has a number of design features which we'll talk about and show you. The main feature is the way that the pockets have been designed that allow for optimal airflow and even airflow distribution to all 10 cylinder ports. You'll also notice these pads. They're actually not there for looks. They're intended as a very specific uh, purpose and what they do is they retain the fasteners that the base plate mounts to the engine. You'll also see that the, there is a cavity inside the lid which allows for an air to water heat exchanger. This is used to actually extract heat from the air charge before it enters the engine based around the principle that the, the cooler the air charge the more power it, it will promote. So the actual core has coolant circulating through it through an isolated cooling system that's also a part of the supercharger. There's a PTFE rod you'll see here which allows a free floating concept to exist with this heat exchanger and the heaters will support the entire core inside the heat exchanger and the manifold will all sit together as the entire piece heats up and cools down during cooling cycles. Now, the next step was to create a supercharger drive system, the actual belt system to drive the supercharger. And that was all based around the factory crank pulley. Factory crank pulley has five ribs and in order to create optimal drive and traction for the supercharger, we would need additional ribs. We created a couple of different prototype bolt-on pulleys also to drive the alternator uh, and also a wider version which we've also tested. The ultimate design was then created and printed in plastic again and you'll see the pieces here were then converted into a production version. It contains an eccentrically weighted uh, free-floating uh, weight inside it and what that does is it, it counteracts the harmonics that are created by the engine's crank as that rotates at up to 8,700 RPM. So the crank pulley drive system will also drive the alternator. You can see the factory alternator pulley and the different versions of pulleys that we created as tests uh, for different concepts and we ended up with the final version. The alternator belt also requires its own tensioner and you can see here some crude designs that we created. All of these were created 10 years ago and then we see here the final version and the tension that's mounted to it. You'll also notice uh, a custom nut that we created, uh, not just for looks, but actually for accessibility. The belt then will run through an, a series of idler pulleys as it makes its way to the supercharger. And the concept is to get optimal wrap around the supercharger for best traction. You'll see here we've created a, a very rough crude idler bracket. It's a prototype from a thin piece of plate and some spaces. We then transposed those mounting points to a slightly larger version. Uh, again, really rough and quickly made. 
And that led to a pre-production piece, which was thicker. It's got pockets and webs to lighten it and strengthen it. And then you'll see here the actual finished manufactured version, which is coated in the Type 3 anodizing, aluminium pulleys, and the actual bores are machined to four decimal places of accuracy so that we can press fit the bearings. And these are high speed bearings designed to tolerate up to 19,000 RPM. Another feature of the idler bracket was the actual boss, which allows removal and an insertion of a belt for belt replacement with minimal mechanical work. Let's have a look at a few more accessories in the supercharger kit. The serpentine belt actually was obstructing one of the thermostat hoses, so we eliminated that and then drew that in CAD in SOLIDWORKS, created a clearance, checked it for flow through the cross-sectional analysis, and then created a, a fixture. This is a pretty bulky fixture designed to last, and the fabricated stainless steel piece, CNC machined, especially bent and crushed pipes, all tested in this jig. Now, one of the last pieces of the hardware system is the air intake for the supercharger. You can see here, this was made 10 years ago. It was hogged out of a block of aluminium and it's, uh, it was designed and tested for just pure prototyping. That was then created in SOLIDWORKS in CAD and then we created a cast finish. This is a 356A aluminium casting, press fits and push fit fittings. And then we ended up with the final piece the supercharger's actual compressor head unit from Magnuson with the Eaton TVS 2300 rotor group and our own manifold with integrated air to water heat exchanger, a tensioner system, uh, internal bypass system, and of course the inlet which mounts to the back. Now, no supercharger system is complete and like with all our supercharger kits, you need software. So we've designed and created software, which is programmed into the original ECUs, the original computers, through the diagnostic port by the installer using a simple laptop. I'm really excited that we've been able to give the V10 enthusiasts and community an extra 200 horsepower, so much more value from their cars, and look forward to doing this for many more years.